So here's the start of this large sandblasting cabinet. Lower frame is uh, two inch. I don't even remember now. Two and a, looks like two and a half inch. Angle iron, quarter inch wall. Bottom plates are some leftover scrap. Put some casters down on the bottom of it. It's angled on the top uh, where the window will be. I'm going to put some cross braces here and I need a piece across the top yet. I got some expanded metal for the bottom. There'll be a couple supports coming across here. I picked that metal up today. Um, I bought a TP Tools scat blast cabinet kit which is the foot pedal, the gun, uh, the tubing, a light, and the window. Uh, I'm going to build a funnel section for the bottom for all the media to fall into. And this will be skinned in 14 gauge. So it rolls around nice and easy right now. I wanted something mobile in the garage so that uh, I don't have to keep it in the same spot the whole time. Uh, garage is kind of overloaded with stuff right now as you can see. Um, so right now this is some of the metal. I got a piano hinge for the door and some angle iron to build a door frame and some toggle latches to hold the door closed. And there's some of the plasma cut metal that we'll probably be sandblasting in. Um, I took the Everlast plasma cutter off the table. I'm going to be using that to rip up uh, these 14 gauge sheets to skin it with. And then I'll probably end up using the plasma table to cut the window and the hole for, the, for your arms to go through for the gloves. Uh, originally, the dimensions I came up with, this is kind of an odd size, but it's 36 inches deep, 45 inches wide, and then uh, about uh, 43 inches high. And I kind of came up with this dimensions because I was going to use these plastic totes as the actual shell and funnel and just cut a door and some windows into it. But like most people say, it's it's more work to kind of repurpose something like that than to actually build it all from scratch. So uh, this will be my second weekend working on this project. Not really a full week and just uh, a little bit here and there. So I last weekend I built the main frame and then today I'm going to work on trying to build the funnel and skin it. So I guess I'll, I'll set you guys up here so you can see the uh, see the Everlast plasma cutter work. I've done a few videos I've done a few videos where the I've had it cutting on the table. I haven't done any hand torch videos. Got a straight edge. I'm using a standoff for this because it doesn't have a drag tip. And I measured the offset from the edge of the cut hole and the nozzle to the edge of the standoff, and I offset the my marks for that. So all we gotta do is
operator error there. Clean that up if I had my travel speed right. But all you gotta do is take a hammer and knock that off. So So the cabinet's coming together pretty good. I got the front panels in, working on the roof. Got some bracing put in under the expanded metal. Got the funnel on with a little trap door at the bottom. The side door. This uh, whole piece is the door long piano hinge on the whole side. I'm going to put three latches across it. Built a little frame. So I'll be able to get some big items in here. We're working on getting the rest of the roof on and then I'm going to put this angle in here try to straighten this out a little bit. I I warped it a little bit when I welded it together. I get a little too anxious sometimes and I just keep going trying to get things done. I guess they say uh, haste makes waste. I cut the window out on the plasma table. Got radius corners. This will get a frame around it. Rings are also cut on the plasma table. This will be able to roll around. I'll need a vacuum system and uh, thinking about putting a reclaimer on it too. But I don't know if that's necessary with cheap media. Let's see if I can stand back far enough here. I got enough junk in here. But not too much left. I'm getting there. Maybe be usable by next weekend. Put a coat of paint on it. And I just put a bunch of stitch welds on this. I'm not going to fully weld it. I'll just uh, silicone it. Alright, so... Next uh, video, hopefully I'll, I'll show it operational and then uh, paint it. So I'm getting ready to paint the cabinet. I got almost everything done on it. That's the light and the receptacle for the inside. I'm probably going to put uh, the vacuum system right here on this side. Because then I could plug it right in there and only have to plug in one cord. I sealed up all the edges here by caulking them on the outside. 
the pan on the bottom, the funnel part, and the top of the cabinet are fully welded. Got armholes in the window, and I put the gasket material on the door. I've got three latches. And the door opens up uh, full width. You can see the light on the inside. So I've got a large opening to put whatever I want in there. And this is the foot pedal for the gun, so you don't got to keep squeezing a trigger. The pickup tube's going to come up over there in that corner. And I got to cut a hole in the expanded metal for the hose to come through. I think I'm going to get a bulkhead fitting to hook the airline up to it. And I can use this hose from here up to the bulkhead fitting and then a separate hose to the gun. And I'll have to cut an, uh, an intake for the vacuum system, which I might probably put in this back corner or something. And once I get it painted, I'll put the glass in and the gloves. And Yeah, light, but there it goes. Here's that gasket material. I left the, the door clamp shut overnight to hold it on there. Then these, they just slip over and hold it closed. So I'm going to paint it like that. And then that's high enough I can get a five gallon bucket under there to empty the media. So the cabinet's now gray. I got the light and the switch wired up in the corner. Airline going into the gun and foot pedal. I mounted the suction line. And here's the gun. Got the cabinet finished up. I had to get a piece of glass cut because the other one I had was too long. This is safety glass, and the other piece was tempered. Painted it gray. Got the gloves in there with the rings, the trim ring. The whole side is a door, so this whole thing will open up. I got three latches. Can see in there. You can see I get something pretty big in there. I don't like this weather stripping I got. Um, hopper, I got some expanded metal in here. A floodlight. This is the inlet air for the vacuum system. And I might need to drill another for that. It's a little, might be a little too small. I think that vacuum is 90 CFM. And, uh, if, uh, if the hole gets covered up, it'll uh, try to suck in the walls. Over here is the switch for the light and the vacuum. Uh, the vacuum's just a, I guess it's a Chinese knockoff. It got slightly damaged in shipping and then actually I dropped it. It fell off the side of the cabinet trying to work by myself. So 
So, didn't seem like anything was going right this morning, but cabinet's all sealed up. And uh, it's pretty big. I got a piece of uh, plastic taped on the inside of the glass. It doesn't get all scratched up. And I, that can get replaced. I'll turn the light on. And the vacuum's pretty loud. loader arm for the 310G. I blasted that. It's got a nice uh, anchor pattern on it so paint should stick really well to that. Well, uh, it took me about a month I guess. Working weekends on it. Thanks for checking it out.